Yeah. Mate, yeah. So I think one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is like, there are moments like that that happen in people's lives where they hit that rock bottom. And there are a lot of people out there that choose not to live on. And then they just, that's the end of them, you know? And it's unfortunate that like we have to go down to those bottoms where it's like, we're really faced with the true thought of like, I'm in so much pain, so much suffering. I can't get out of this. Like why live on? How did, like, what was your rock bottom? And then like, why did you decide to do the work and, and, you know, um, continue on? Um, yeah, it was just that, it was that epiphany. Like it was, there was, there was that much darkness, that much pain, um, uh, anger, frustration, anxiety, depression, guilt, shame, all of these things just coursing through my being. And then I don't, know why you know i've spoken to a lot of different people and they're like it's your life purpose you put it here for this reason it's you know it's just what you're meant to do this epiphany just struck me out of nowhere and it was that it was that thought of my god it was like time stood still from it and i've got my hand on the door handle and i literally i'm a 30 year old man and i can't open a door uh, i just it was i think it was so irrational that it just cut through everything and just hit me between the eyes i was like this doesn't make sense mm. you know, you're a 30 year old male with arms that work the door's not locked it's not boarded up or anything all you have to do is just turn it you know 90 degrees and it'll open but i, I couldn't do it my the anxiety was protecting me it was like a massive bodyguard that had wrapped its arms around me i was like nope we are not going out there it's too dangerous and I thought, how fucking brilliant. Like, what what an amazing part of me. Um, and in the sense that it's protecting me, but it's it's not <laughs> helping me. It's not helpful. You know, I'd love to go on a date. I'd love to go and catch up yeah. with my mates. I'd love to go to work. Um, so, but it, it didn't do that. It, was, it, it didn't take any of that into account. So, yeah, having that moment where if my mind has deteriorated to, to this end of the spectrum, you know, what's it capable of the other end? What, what, what if I put some time and effort and some energy into it? And I looked at my mind like a muscle that I hadn't wow. used ever. And I went, well, I can't expect this muscle to be able to operate if I'm not exercising it and if I'm not training it and if I'm not conditioning it. Um, so yeah, it, it sort of created a gap, and I fucking raced out that gap before I could think too much about it, and uh, found a psychologist just down the road, and she was CBT trained. So and, and CBT, you know, thankfully, resonated with me, and I spent about twelve months with her, mm. um, and and that I got to just break myself down. You spoke about it earlier. And I think people are really afraid to have an aversion to breaking down, but it's, it's the best thing we can do. It's, you've got to let go and let all the, just let it fucking fall, you know? And so I spent 12 months deconstructing and then reconstructing of a version of me that, you know, didn't need all this scaffolding on the outside to support me. I didn't need to be able to run. I didn't need my family. I didn't need my mates and all this. I didn't, I wasn't codependent on all of these X, ones to make me happy. Suddenly I had this foundation that had A, B and C in place and I could just be happy. Uh, and then when those things come along, oh, they make me happier, but they're not the source of my happiness. 